welcome to this episode of Entrepreneur Showcase Series brought to you by Petrania Media LLC and Parkway Media Partners. I'm your host, Petrania Poonswan. Today, our guest is in the studio with us right now. Her name is Rena McDonald. She is the managing partner of Eclipse Law Group right here in Henderson, right? Downtown Henderson, is that that's where you're right, located? That's right. Thank you so much for having me. So great to have you here in the studio. And we're talking, of course, amazing entrepreneurs, but they come in all different forms because you're not just an attorney. You do a lot of different things. So we're going to be talking about that. But first, Rena, you are um, you founded this law firm, right? Eclipse Law Group. So tell us about that start. What prompted you to, to start your own law firm? So, you know, I had worked for some other attorneys in town. Mm -hmm. I really became an attorney because I wanted to help people. It was, yeah. you know, what, what drove me through school and, and why I wanted to be an attorney. The other firms I worked at, I wasn't really getting that part of it. Mm. I wasn't, I didn't really feel like we were helping people. So mm -hmm. I knew I could do better. So yeah. I started my firm in 2007. Good for and you. we've just grown. Yeah. And we're doing really well. So Eclipse Locker, was there a reason for the name? So we were formerly McDonald Law Group. Okay. And, um, you know, it was about me a lot. Yeah. And it, it shouldn't be about me. Yeah. So I wanted to be, I wanted our firm to be more about the people who worked in it and what we did, mm -hmm. less about me personally. Mm. So that's why we rebranded to the Eclipse Law Group. My family, we saw our first eclipse a couple years ago. <laughs> and it was life changing. I don't know if you've ever seen a full eclipse. Yeah, I was it's actually magical. in Seattle when that happened. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's magical, mm -hmm. and so it meant a lot to us. And yeah. I wanted to I wanted to bring that into my everyday work. I like that. Yeah, something different, right? Something right. that just kind of because in in a way, the work that you do can be life changing for a lot of your clients as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So people haven't worked with you and haven't known you. What is your firm known for? What are the services that you offer? So we practice in several different areas. Mm -hmm. We do estate planning, real estate, business, and a little family law. Mm -hmm. I really want to make the clients better. You know, that's my real goal is to, is to help them out with whatever the issue is. So I want them when they leave our office to really feel like their lives have been improved yeah. by our services. So we strive to communicate with our clients, mm -hmm. make sure that we're, we're listening to them. Such a huge part of any legal process but um so that's kind of how we differ i think than other law firms is mm -hmm. we're there for our clients i've i hug my clients most of my clients know me on a first name basis and yeah. we're friends because they're wonderful and that's my goal so that's what we offer to our clients yeah and as the passion that it was there and you mentioned the reason you really kind of tempted you know you wanted to start something of your own because you feel like you know when it comes to law it can be overwhelming and a lot of people come and just kind of been you know in a state like they really need help right and and what's I mean, tell, talk to me about the, that challenge. When you're at other firms, um, like when you aren't responding to what they're lo really looking for, that's frustrating for you, right? And it was very there. frustrating. Yeah, A lot of firms are about income and, mm -hmm. you know, every business needs to survive. Right, right. But when it becomes more about how much a person brings into the firm and less about what we're doing for them, mm -hmm. that's when it was enough for me. Yeah. And what was the hardest part? I mean, I think starting any type of business can be difficult and making that transition. What was the biggest challenge for you when you started your own firm that maybe you didn't expect? I also started a family at the same time. Oh, wow. Because, you know, Double whammy. why not? <laughs> um, and I think the challenge I... I was never told no mm -hmm. as a child. Um, if I wanted to do something, my family was very supportive, mm -hmm. and it was like, okay, when are you going to get it done? Right. I was surprised how many people wanted to tell me no. So that was really shocking, I think, when I first started, mm -hmm. that people didn't expect you to succeed. Mm -hmm. I wasn't used to that. I was used to just get out of Everyone's my way. I'm making supporting. it. I'm making it happen. Yeah. So yeah, that was challenging. Um, so how did you get over it? Obviously, you made it to this point, you know, despite kind of the barriers that you faced when you started that. Yeah, I think it's very challenging, or at least it was challenging 20 years ago for women mm -hmm. in a way that hopefully is not as challenging today, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm just determined to get it done. So in my mind, it's already happened. So I was surprised when people said no, because I had already it was already done. Once I've decided to do something... yeah. I make it happen. Right. So right. failure is not an option for no, you. No, I just yeah. kept pushing forward yeah. and I wouldn't I wouldn't accept that as an answer. Yeah. I try not to accept that as an answer for my clients. Mm -hmm. So 
it's just in my nature, I think, to push and to make sure that those things that I want to accomplish get done. And you know, it's funny, we were thinking, talking to other entrepreneurs about how they get the word out there about their business. 2007, much different world than it is now and how we're getting information out on social media and things like that. So that was just kind of the beginning, right? Right. How did you get your word out in the beginning about your business? It was all word of mouth, mm -hmm. all word of mouth. So I was a small boutique firm. Um, can't compete with the big boys, which was fine. I wasn't looking for those kind of clients. Mm -hmm. So it was all word of mouth. That worked really, really well for us. The changes in mm. the last years in the industry are amazing. The yeah. social media, the, right. the podcasts, the, yeah. you know, these things that you never imagined were even on the radar mm -hmm. back then have become a huge part of it. We love technology and I love changing it and, and like seeing what we can do next. These kind of things are amazing and they're so much fun. And so much more fun than, you know, print ads or well, things I think that we used can, to do. Yeah, and because you have such a great story, Rena, and especially being a woman-owned business, entrepreneur in a way, starting your own practice, but also, you know, that whole, le the legal business, you know, and just being, like you said, very male-dominated industry. Hopefully, it's a little bit more, you know, female now, but having people like you, I think, in this position really... It's been kind of, and, and tell me about that. Has it been motivating? Because now I know your firm is not intentionally all women, but have they talked to you about just the fact that seeing more women like you running a firm has been inspiring for them? I never considered myself a leader mm -hmm. until some someone said that to me once, and I, I laughed. And then my staff is like, well, of course you're, you're our leader. Yeah. You know, you push us forward, and we do things because, you know, you help us and support us. So... Identifying that that was a role that I had, which is, it sounds funny, but it was just something I never even really considered that I was doing. Yeah. But realizing it and nurturing it, I am so proud of the women in my office. Well, we have some pictures, I think, that you sent us to show um, just your team and you. And, and I think it's so great to see that. I mean, you know, you don't think, I mean, you think legal and men and women. But to see a firm with women um, who are really kind of taking charge. And these are the women like you who are really dedicated, I think, to, to helping other people, right? Right. Yeah. And talk to me about be. that. Some of the people in your team, like what inspired them to, to become part of this group? Well, you know, um, again, COVID, life changes, right? Mm -hmm. We've had some long-term staff that, that left to do other things mm -hmm. because they felt like they had done enough here. And we have some new people come on. So that was a big change. I think the way people have a feel about work now has changed dramatically. Yeah. We have several employees that are um, remote yeah. employees, which I never thought would be an option for us, but it works out really well. Yeah, and you support so, that. Absolutely. Hmm. I think, well, I know the women who work for me, they really care about people too, and they mm -hmm. want to make sure that they're helping people as much as I do. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do the work if, if you didn't have that compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a story, you know, like a particular client that you worked with recently that's been kind of, okay, this is what Eclipse is all about. This is where life changes when you get to help people in a specific way. I'm so blessed. I have a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. I have a recent client um, just last week, just last Monday. They um, have been trying to get, they've been trying to adopt this child for years. Mm. Lots of barricades yeah, to that. Yeah, so I to hear about the resolved. adoption process, right? Yeah. It can be very complicated. Mm -hmm. And we were just able to affect the adoption last mm. week. That's life-changing. Right. You know, you stand in the courtroom, and I tried, you know, I said to the, to the child, have you ever been in a courtroom before? Mm. Like, and they, they and don't, they don't this understand. Child? This one was very young. Yeah. They don't understand. I'm like, it's not going to be scary. Right, it's going right, to be right. great. Yeah, yeah. But... Knowing that that child has an amazing um, set of parents that are mm -hmm. going to take care of them, they're safe, they're secure, it's it's incredible. And I'm so thankful to be a part of that journey for them. Yeah. And, and for them, I think when people come to you, they want someone to really almost be their friend, right? Because you're their partner through probably some of the most difficult times that they're going through. Sometimes, you know, there's lots of hand-holding. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean that literally and figuratively, you know. Yeah, yeah. But... I want to be that for them, and I know that what we do is going to help them, mm -hmm. so it, it makes it worth it for the, the times that are that are challenging. Yeah. And, and have you always wanted to, to go into the legal world? Was that always your dream? I know you went to law school right here in Las Vegas, right? Right. I'm born and raised in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Um, my mom would tell you, 
I wanted to be an attorney very, very young. Mm -hmm. I used to watch the people's court. And, <laughs> yeah. And I would run around the house and with a hammer and like wow. pretend like I was a judge. Yeah. What but, was it about it? Like that said, okay, this is cool. I want to do something like this. You know, it was, for me, it was really just the desire to help mm -hmm. and to see that people, somebody could step in, help bridge the gap between mm -hmm. the people and the law and really guide them to whatever it is they needed. That, that, I found that so satisfying. And I'm so lucky that I get to do that every day for a job. Yeah. And you were born and raised here, went to school here. You never left here. Is there something about this town that, in a way, you feel like you can really serve in, in, in the best way? So service is a huge part of, I think, being in, a part of a community. Yeah. So we, um, we strive as a firm to really uh, give back to the community and really participate in the community as well. I think if you live anywhere and you don't do that, mm -hmm. you're just vacationing. You don't really live there. Yeah. So that's really important to me. This town has done amazing things for me and my family, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that we're giving back. So yeah. that's really important to us. Yeah. And, you know, uh, what's been really great is that you're not just practicing. You're now, you know, giving back in a way that you are educating other people so that they can feel empowered. Because a lot of things when it comes to laws, people feel like they don't have any power and they are fighting against a system that is fighting against them. You're giving them a tool through this book that you've written recently. So talk talk to us about that. What kind of got you the idea, I want to write this book? Yeah, so we, we first started doing estate planning because my clients needed it. Mm -hmm. They got other things done. They didn't want and to go to somebody else. And if people don't know estate planning, give us a brief description <coughs> of what this is. So estate planning is drafting wills, trust, and power of attorney documents. So mm -hmm. documents that are important when they can't make decisions for themselves. Right. So we started doing that for our clients because they just needed, you know, they needed it and they didn't want to go somewhere else. It's become a huge part of our practice. Mm. And the, the problem is, even if they have done all of the work and they've, they've drafted all the documents they need and I've done everything I can do, when someone passes away, there's a wealth of information that goes with them, Yeah. right? So I started making a list mm -hmm. of things that were important for my clients to tell somebody. Mm. That list became like a pamphlet because mm -hmm. it just kept growing. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, why don't I just make this a book, yeah. right? And I can just give it to my clients and it'll be great. Yeah. Well, then my publisher said, oh, no, this is important stuff. Yeah. Everybody needs it, just not your clients. Right, right. So that's what kind of led me here. So that, and you brought the book with you. I and did. I think we have a picture of it that we want to show, too. So the book is called Because <coughs> I Care. Um Is that the full name? That's that's it. It's Because, because I, I Care, Care, an estate planning journal. Okay. And so, you, this just came out in January. It just came out. Wow. And I'm so, so it's like proud cut of it. off the print. And you are, um, your basic, it, this is kind of a guidebook for people who have no idea what, what is estate planning, what do they need to do, how they can start planning. Is that right? So it is a guidebook, mm -hmm. um, just generally. Yeah. But this does not take place of an estate plan. Mm. So if you have a trust, great. Mm -hmm. You need this too. If you have nothing, you need this. Mm. And you need a trust probably too. But yeah, yeah. That's a different conversation. <laughs> um, this is a place for if something were to happen to you right now, mm -hmm. where, would someone know where where your bank accounts are, what your passwords are, what um, where you take your dogs to the vet? Yeah, uh, you know all that information. Yeah, would somebody have it? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Mm -hmm. And I find that even between like husband and wife, mm -hmm. you don't usually share that information. Yeah, you divide up the work. It's true. One person does one thing, one person does another. Right. So that's what the book does, is it's a repository for that information mm. so that if something happens to you, it's somebody can use here. it and, and they can and it's figure it out. My husband and I were just talking about yesterday, is like, do you even know my password to my phone? Because you hear all these horror stories, something happens to someone, they can't even get into their phone because they don't have that password. And I guess, you know, the phone companies make it so difficult to even get into that information, right? Right. It used to be easier I could tell my clients just look in the mailbox. Mm. But now that so many things are done electro electronically, right. the mailbox is no longer a good source yeah. for yeah. what's going on. I mean, who gets on. mail anymore, right? Except for junk mail. 
Right. Yeah. Everything right. is online now. In political campaigns. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's oh, all yes. you get. That's Don't all remind you get. me about that. Wait until <laughs> the next cycle. But yeah, no, I think it's great. So with this book, it's almost like something that you can work together as a family and to put all this information in place. And then they can come to you and say, okay, we really need help putting right. it into a legal document. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I, my goal really is to start conversations. Mm. So I talk a lot about my grandmother. She passed away a couple years ago, and mm-hmm. she had cancer, mm. which, while it was horrible, it was also good because she knew she was going to go. Mm. But we had about six months, mm-hmm. and it was a great six months. I tell people I value that time more in that six months than almost the, the rest of my relationship with her because wow. I got to know her. We had conversations. Mm-hmm. Like, we really talked. And there was no subterfuge. There's no... You know, pretending Mm -hmm. it was honest conversations. They're very hard to have those conversations, right? Nobody wants to talk about it. Right. But spoiler alert, you're going to pass. My goal with this book is to get people having those conversations. Yeah. Because I think once they do, they will understand the value of that. And learn to treasure it like I have. And to appreciate the time because, you know, you you, you knew your grandmother had six months, but we don't know. I mean, right. you know, we live our lives already not knowing when it's our time, and we needed to have this kind of a plan in place. And I think this is true for, for any age, right, for pe- the whole family. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's interesting to watch families. The worst thing that can happen to a family is is someone passing away. And mm. it's not necessarily just because of the loss of somebody. It's yeah. the behaviors that happen the afterwards aftermath. with yeah. the, the fighting over the vase or whatever. Yeah. If someone can have a conversation with their kids and say, I want this, mm-hmm. it's pretty hard for the kids to fight about it afterwards. Right, right. It's it just when, lessens that conflict, right. you know, the potential conflicts that could come when up. When people are already stressed out, yeah. they're sad. yeah. They're trying to deal with the, the loss. So that's my goal. That's my, you know, high altitude goal of... How hard was it to write this book? I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, entrepreneurs and things like, okay, I have an idea. I really, like, I see a need. I, I think people should get this information. What's your advice for someone who wants to write a book? What's, what's the first step that they should take? You know... Was it hard for you? I have to say it was so easy. Was and it? I feel guilty saying that because I hear other <laughs> authors talk about but struggling. But why do you think? Because you already know what people need. And... I knew exactly what yeah. I wanted this book to do. Mm. I knew what my goal was. And I knew exactly what I wanted to convey. Yeah. So it just wrote itself. It was it was very easy to write. Now, I'll tell you, it was hard to write. And it was hard to find the time and mm-hmm. the space for well, that's it. that's the other thing, you right? Know, I'm, yeah. I'm a mother. I mm-hmm. do a lot of community stuff. I have the firm. There's there's a lot going on. Yeah. So finding the time was challenging, but when I I, I and I tell this this story, I think it's really funny. But I told everybody at work I mm-hmm. had to do something at home. Mm-hmm. Told everybody at home I was at work, <laughs> and I like parked around the house. That was your trick. Yeah. yeah. I snuck into the backyard <laughs> and I sat in the backyard with my laptop. Nobody knew I was there. Yeah. And I got it done. Wow. You just have to figure out what it, whatever yeah. that is. And for that was you. your priority. You right. needed to get. And how long did it take you to put this book together? Um, the actual writing of the book took me a month or two. It didn't oh, take wow. very much time at all. Yeah. Um, the stylistic things I think are more complicated because mm-hmm. you want it to look a certain way or to feel a certain way, right. and those took longer. But um, I had a great publisher, Red Thread Publishing. They were amazing, and they really kept me on track, which is good. Yeah. You know, my clients come first. My family comes first. So that would, I'd be like, oh, I have this big thing going on today. I'll do it tomorrow. And they're like, nope, you got to get it done today. So, you know, sometimes you just need that help. So that's, that would be my Mm -hmm. advice. Know what you're going to write, get a great support system that's going to support you doing it Mm -hmm. and make sure you, you're, if it's important to you, make it important to you. That's great. And, you know, going back to your law practice, obviously you're in a position now where you're, you know, leading a firm, you have a great team um, for maybe other women out there. Maybe they're in law school right now thinking of going into law. Um, What's your advice for them going into the business as you see here right now in 2023? You know, I would encourage it Mm -hmm. if you're doing it for the right reasons. So if you're doing it because you want to make a difference in somebody's life, then make sure that's what you're keeping in mind Mm because there's going to be bad days. Right. You know, Um, 
I've been practicing for almost 20 years and I don't win every case. Mm -hmm. And they kill you, the ones that you don't win, right? Right. But I know that I've helped my clients even if they don't ultimately succeed. So you gotta keep that in mind. So if it's, if they're doing it for the right reasons, I would tell them the legal field is incredibly rewarding. Yeah. It's, it, you can make a huge difference, but you have to be doing it for the right reasons. And seeing more women in the field now, how does that make you feel? Oh, it's so nice. Yeah. It's so nice, it's a nice, you know, I, I used to go in court we wait for the judges sometimes to make decisions and right. there's a lot going on. So I, I remember sitting in a courtroom one day and it was 50 attorneys mm -hmm. and I'm trying to mentally like calculate how much time is that's being <laughs> billed in the courtroom at one time. Right. And I look around and I'm like, I'm the only woman in here. Wow. Me and the court clerk. That's not okay. Yeah. It's not like that anymore. Now it's definitely a lot more. And actually, interestingly enough, a lot more female judges. Yeah, that's great to I see. I love it. Yeah, that's great. And you know, and you've been really, you know, I think carving a path for a lot of women in this industry. So thank you for that. And um, if people want to get in touch with you and want to work with you, or maybe just to learn more about the book, where can they go? So we have a website for the law firm. It's mm -hmm. eclipselawgroup.com. Okay. There's a link on there to Amazon to purchase the book. Okay. You can go directly to Amazon. Uh, it's because I care by. Rena McDonald, mm -hmm. and um, are you thinking of doing more books? Yeah, this is actually the third book I've written, oh, but this wow. one is the first that was written just by me. The other two were anthologies. Oh, so I've been asked to write another anthology, and I I may, but I kind of I'm kind of hooked on writing it myself now. Yeah, yeah. So. We'll see I don't know happens. if I want to share it anymore now that I've got that bug. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Well, you're doing great. And thank you so much for all you do and, and the great work that you're doing and inspiring, obviously, more women who come after you. Thank you. Thank you. for Thank you for being in the show. And thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode and Rita McDonald as our guest today. And we'll see you again next time.